So hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about some introduction to uh, power electronics. So let's talk about uh, some power processing, and you know, in every block, basically this is a kind of general uh, design of a power electronic system. So you have the power input, then you have a converter, then you have the power output, and of course we will have some control of input with that system. So we can have different voltage characteristics at the source. So we can have a DC voltage, for example, at various voltages as an input. So you can most of the time maybe use some uh, systems with your house, house. So you use either 230 or 110 volts if you are living in US or Japan, that kind of things. Or you can have three phase AC input as well. Also, you can have different requirements at the output. So for example, you can require some uh, constant DC voltage like an USB charger or that kind of things constant at 5 volts. You can require some adjustable DC, maybe some power supply or that kind of uh, device. Or you can require some uh, constant frequency, variable magnitude AC or variable frequency and magnitude AC like a, a three-phase uh, motor drive. So control is almost always needed and either you want to uh, keep the output voltage constant or maybe you want to uh, protect the load from some kind of overloads and you need to maintain some power quality and also maybe if you are uh, sending some power to the grid from a photovoltaic system you need to uh, fix the frequency output and same with the uh, grid. So, if you have a look at the general purpose, then we can have different voltage levels at the input and there's some voltage or power output that you desire at the output and you need to have some controller in that system. So in somehow you need to take some feedback and maybe you need a reference voltage, reference current, whatever, and maybe you need to have some feed forward controller as well and as an output uh, you need to send some signals to your converter. So we can also classify power electronic devices with respect to their switching characteristics. So either you can have line frequency converters or they are called naturally commutated converters as if uh, diode rectifiers connected to fifth hour systems. Or you can have uh, force commutated converters, switching converters, those are for example MOSFET converters or that kind of uh, switch mode power supplies. Or there's also like a resonant uh, power uh, converters, so they all already switch at zero voltage or zero current switching. So there's also some uh, basic building blocks, so let's have a look at those things. So for AC-DC converters, we call them rectifiers, so those are the blocks that convert AC as input and output the DC, so they are called rectifiers. Or we can have DC to AC converters, they are called inverters, so they are inverting DC to AC. And the next thing is we can have DC-DC converters which they are also called uh, switch mode uh, power supplies. And we can have AC-AC converters, you know, they are not really common but they are called uh, cyclo converters. So the desired, let's talk about the desired factors in a, a power electronic device. So high efficiency is really important and we want to make our converters as efficient as possible. So here you can see the uh, efficiency improvement by just changing the device from silicon MOSFET to silicon carbides, which you know we will talk about in the following weeks. And there's also uh, uh, size is uh, important and we want to make the power electronic devices as small as possible. In other words, we want to achieve high power density and here you see the first generation uh, power converters for motor drives for Formula E races and those are 200 kilowatt uh, inverters and just in two seasons okay so it they, they basically half the size and they reduce the mass by six kilogram and like this was from 2017 probably there was a further improvement and reliability is also very important especially if you are working in a mission critical system like an aerospace application and that kind of stuff so you want to uh, have a power you know in every condition you don't want to uh, and if you don't want any failure or that kind of uh, problem so here 
you see a primary and power supply and there's a backup system and in that case one of them fails and of course low cost is a really important aspect of you know engineering uh, projects in general so you want to achieve the uh, the same specs with the minimum cost as possible so here on the left you see the original macbook charger and on the right you see a fake one of course there's probably some safety problems with the one on the right but if you see two products on the market probably you would prefer the cheaper one uh, which is why the low cost is important so there is let's look at the applications of power electronics there is a wide variety of uh, applications so here you see a really small uh, power electronic application so the scale is just one millimeter and what you see here is a air cord inductor so here is basically the coils of the inductor so this is just for a really small uh, power electronics device and also you can have uh, that kind of devices probably in your uh, desktop computers or in other power supplies so they are in the range of 100 watts and there are also uh, like several kilowatts for industrial motor drives so the photo is not there and there are also like really large applications here what you see is uh, basically a high voltage DC transmission so the, that system converts the AC to DC transmitted as high voltage DC then you again convert it to AC and for scale I don't know if you can see but there's a small guy here so all that things hanging in the air are power electronic blocks they are hang, hang put in the air in order to prevent any sparks you know any uh, failures between uh, line to neutral or line to earth so in a power electronic design you need to consider many aspects like in, in a power electronic device so you need to have electromagnetics maybe inductor design you need to have solid state physics the uh, device characteristics electronics you know simulation signal processing you know we will we will see those things in the following six and as we discussed there will be always some control and there will be control theory circuit theory and if you are driving a machine there will be electrical machines or if it is i don't know photovoltaic system sending power to the grid there will be some uh, power systems aspect as well so let's look at what is inside a laptop both the charger and the laptop uh, itself so here first as a charger you have a rectifier so it is a ac to dc converter so it just takes the input uh, from a single phase ac system and it charges your battery inside the laptop then inside your laptop maybe you have an inverter for led lights or that kind of things or you can have other dc dc converters for microprocessors power management etc or maybe you need a higher voltage uh, for this drive and other devices you can need a boost converter so but even you know let's look at what in detail what is inside that uh, rectifier so this is inside a macbook charger so basically you know we will discuss all those components in the following weeks but just uh, look briefly so you have the ac input then you have the bridge rectifier which you know converts the sinusoid to a rectified uh, sinusoid then after that you have a pfc system power factor corrector we will talk about those things you will have a transformer you know a probably flyback uh, converter then you have add a couple of inductors and capacitors for the boost and back stages you have the controller there's its own uh, microcontroller and then you have the filter capacitors and this is your dc to your laptop and let's look at uh, what's inside an electric car i think this is a, a model s from tesla so you have the charge input of an electric car it can be a three phase ac or a single phase ac then you have the battery charger so it is an ac dc uh, converter then you have the battery then after the battery you can have the main uh, motors of the electrical car and you can have ac machine which requires variable frequency variable magnitude input so you have inverter for that one so basically this is dc to ac converter or inverter and you have the inverters for that uh, driving motors and of course you, you need other electronics like microcontroller systems vehicle electronics 
and for that you can have a different number of DC DC converters and let's look at what's inside a, a grid connected PV system so in a PV system basically the photovoltaics generate some DC but that DC level changes depending on the light intensity so you need to have a DC DC converter in order to get more or less a constant uh, voltage DC so and here MPPT's maximum power point tracker so basically it tries to maximize the efficiency of the photovoltaic system and after that once you have the DC we want to send that power to the grid which is a three phase 50 hour system so you need to have a DC to AC converter so we convert that DC to DC and send it as AC to the system and let's look at inside a wind turbine so in a wind turbine so basically you have this is the blades you have some kind of this is a permanent magnet synchronous generator or they can be induction generators so on so basically again the output is you know variable frequency three phase AC but that variable frequency is not same with the grid frequency so what we do is we convert that AC to DC first so this is again working as a, a rectifier and of course they have its own uh, controllers and that kind of things once we have more or less uh, constant DC now we are converting that DC to constant 50 Hertz uh, output and send it to the grid so here you see a detailed representation again there are like two uh, converters one of them is AC DC the other one is DC to AC so they are called back-to-back -back converters and basically we are taking that variable frequency voltage and we are just sending it to the power at constant frequency okay so that's all uh, for this lecture